when you look at Mozambique over the last seven years, are you, are you happy and ecstatic because of this great economic growth, GDP growth that you've got? Or are you, are you saddened by how far uh, uh, along you still have to go? Yeah, I, I would say first that the country since the war ended had been uh, uh, witnessing a lot of uh, positive strides. Right. Growth rate of uh, seven, eight, etc. So what I did once I became the president was to continue with that. Uh, the challenge is uh, when are we going to move into two digits? Right. Uh, because the conditions uh, in terms of the will of the people on one side, uh, but also uh, the conditions in terms of resources, natural resources, are there. What we need is to put all that together with people that are skilled, educated, so that they can make best use of those resources. That's why on our, on our, on our program, we uh, give priority to teaching, I mean, to technical education mm -hmm. in particular, and also to increasing uh, university uh, and technical colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, as you were talking about the 500 years before, uh, I can say that those 500, 500 years before uh, just produced one university. Wow. Uh, and since we became independent, now we have... Well, you know, so much of our discussion in the last couple of days here at this conference has been about the importance of education at, at early levels. Uh, and you've really put a great deal of importance on that in right. Mozambique. That's right. I think I was reading you have a 95 or 96 percent uh, enrollment rate in public education? Yes, yes. Uh, but it's not enough. We need to have 100 percent. And you've uh, got very big classes. And we have classes with a ratio of one, one teacher to 700, uh, 770. Uh, students, right. which, is, which is quite, which quite is high. Which is about twice as much as you'd like? What would you like, about 30? We would like, we would like 30, around 30. That mm -hmm. would be better. I think we're going to achieve that. We're going to achieve that because uh, the program that we are having is that at least all children should go into school. Right. So and you make in, it mandatory? Is that what it is? It's yes. compulsory? Yes. Up to seven, seven classes. The primary is compulsory. Uh, all should go there. Yep. So we have few left out. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Girls should also participate mm -hmm. in equal numbers wherever possible. Uh, but there is also the question of these girls should go up to at least seven classes mm -hmm. uh, because they would start in three, four, four classes, but because of uh, the situation uh, at home, they will desist mm -hmm. and, uh, and, have, uh, have, and, have, and not continue their studies. Uh, so, but in order to do that, we have to have proper teachers training colleges. So in all provinces we have teachers training colleges. Uh, at the beginning we had to have uh, courses that would take only one year. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to get a lot of teachers. Yes, I got, I got a lot of change. Right. Now we are moving to, towards uh, two to three years uh, and these also will improve the quality right. of, of teaching that, that we are having. And is teaching uh, one of the struggles we have in North America is that teachers are valuable everywhere in the world, but we don't we don't value them as much as we. We don't should. pay them as we much as they should. They should do that. We have the same situation yeah. for two reasons: one, because we don't have money. <laughs> that's that's a very strong one. Sure. Yeah, and secondly, of course, uh, people don't value them as they should be sure. valued. You know, we have education, we have health services also yep. that need a lot of resources. And of course, we need also all the basic conditions for development. Well, you're in an exciting part of Africa right now. I mean, Africa as a continent has growth that is, I don't know, two and a half, three times, maybe yeah. more than what we're going to have in the United States this year. And a lot of that is concentrated in Southern Africa. While well, you've got a lot of problems in Southern Africa, uh, you've got a, a, a great uh, neighbor in South Africa. Uh, where, where do you see your best opportunities for growth without this inflation that you've got? Because you've got a double-edged sword. You've got growth around 8% and you've got inflation above 12%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, well, that depends exactly on, 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 uh, on, 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 uh, on, on the productivity. Right. So our products would be more competitive. Yep. And that's what we are looking for. 
and that's what we are doing. When we have a, a lot of teaching in technical course, courses, that's exactly to increase the productivity. But not only, not only that, it's not just a matter of productivity. It's also a matter of us being able to absorb the technical and scientific knowledge because only with that we can be sustainable. We cannot have an, a, a sustainable development if we are not able to absorb the, the scientific knowledge. Yeah. You know, my parents were born in Pretoria, and uh, for their honeymoon they went to Maputo, which mm -hmm. was Lorenzo mm -hmm. Marx all those years ago. And about 10 or 12 years ago, I had a chance to go for the first time. And I had listened to them for 40 years carrying on about this remarkable city that it was. And you know, when I got back, when I got there about 12 years ago, it, it didn't seem so remarkable. It seemed like a city that had gone through a very rough time for many, many years. Uh, but I didn't get to see the countryside. I didn't get to see a whole lot of Mozambique. So I didn't get the sense of what all of these years of civil war did to the country. What are you still recovering from? It is destroyed a lot. It destroyed a lot. One million people died, at least. Infrastructures in terms of, uh, of, uh, of factories, even uh, agricultural, were destroyed. Uh, and uh, schools also were destroyed. We had to start again. Uh, it, it, you were really, you almost were starting a new country. Yeah, it was pr pr practically that. Uh, a country that f at least what they had is to say, we don't want war anymore. So this is it. We are not going to uh, accept to go into a, into, 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 into a war. And this is very important for us. Yeah. Today, the country has changed. We have more schools than we had before. Mm -hmm. We have more hospitals than we had before. We have more roads than we had before. We have more factories than we had before. We have economic growth much more than we used sure. to have. And that before. economic growth has been steady, steady. almost since yes. Yes, yes, yes. you had peace. Yes, yes, yes. 1994? Yes, well, we had, we, had, we had a drop some yeah. two years ago because of this economic crisis. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, anyway, even that, it went to 6.2, 6.8. So we can say that a lot of good things are happening. Yeah. If you go to Maputo again, you will not recognize Maputo. Yeah. Just in the last three years. Well, it looked like a city years. that was ready to look like a great city. Yeah, it is. It, it, has, <laughs> you, it has infrastructure. It had beautiful architecture. Yeah, it had yeah. broad boulevards. Yes. Uh, you know, it looked like a, what could be a great city. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and it's quite good. It's, it's, but it's, you know, it's, you, it's, this civil war ended in, in 92, correct? 92, that's right. 92 was, so independence was 77? 75. 75, and then the civil war ended in 92. But it was really until about 94 before we got a government going properly in, in, in Mozambique, right? So we measure from 94 you know, to... There is one thing which, 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 which is amazing in a way. Since the moment the war ended, yeah. fortunately there was support to improve the conditions for right. people to come back to Mozambique. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had uh, more uh, than one a million and a half of people outside the country. Yeah. So they came back yep. and they started to reorganize their lives again in the villages. And we have many displaced people, 4.5 uh, in the country. In, within? Within the country, within the country itself. So they went back to the regions, not all of course, uh, to, to their regions. So we used to import maize. We stopped importing maize right. in two or three years time. So that period was short, but it was very important in recreating confidence. And, and you still import rice? Ah, we do import rice, we do import uh, wheat, uh, uh, we, we, we do import uh, uh, Irish potato. Uh, but those are things that uh, uh, we are going in the three, three years time, stop importing, okay. we are producing there. And you've got some work going on, I think it's in the north part of the country where you're doing some work with the Brazilians and the Japanese to create a, a sort of a tract of farming arable land. That's right. Tell, tell us about this. Yes, with, with Japan and Brazil, well, first, Japan. Japan is supporting us in tarmacking the road that goes uh, from the border with Malawi uh, up to Nampula, mm -hmm. uh, which is something like 500 or so uh, kilometers away. And that road goes also up to Lishinga inside the country. It's an area which is very rich in terms of, agric of agriculture. Along that track, up to Nampula, uh, there is a recreation of savanna, 
and this is done by, 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 by the Brazilians that are su surveying, but with the, 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 the Japanese paying, uh, you know, uh, financing the system. A very interesting study was done. It shows that in that area we can produce a lot of grain. Uh, we can increase productivity because our problem is not only producing, it's increased productivity. Mm -hmm. Some people think that, well, for us to produce, for example, rice, we have to increase, I mean, the, 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 the surface of, of, of the fields. Uh, but we are not thinking that way anymore. You want we, greater yield? We want to grant, yeah, the greater yeah. yield, which is what. So that program will help us doing that. Okay. You know, I think back to 1994, 17 years now of, uh, of independence. Um, 17 years, is that right? No, oh, no uh, 30, 30 something. 74, uh, no, I'm sorry, since 1994, since uh, the end of the Civil ah, okay. War. Uh, the, the war, okay, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, an interesting time. Uh, South Africa, uh, Nelson Mandela was elected, the first democratic then, elections yeah. there. It was also when Rwanda had its tragedy. Yeah. Um, you know, the post-colonial period was a very difficult time to be productive in Africa. Uh, the, the original post-colonial period, the 50, 60 year old post-colonial period. But this period in the 90s has had seen so much factionalism in Africa, and now we're in, in, the, in the 2000s, and we, we still, we've got this opportunity in Africa because there's so much a, a, a economic growth. It's a strong engine of growth. Countries like yours are bringing the average up, but, but so is South Africa, and uh, Egypt continues to be productive in East African countries. And yet, we're not entirely done in Africa with factionalism. We're, we're still in danger in some parts of Africa of, of not getting past factionalism, uh, in some cases, ethnic factionalism. Is that done in Mozambique? Well, well uh, my, uh, Africa has 54 countries. Uh, and if you go to these 54 countries, you'll find that those problems will be at, 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 at probably less than 10. Sure. Yeah. And then you see that uh, there are lesser and less uh, countries involved in that type of problems that uh, impact negatively. Sure. In, You're right. In yeah, it's country. very few. Yeah, yeah. So there is a progress on that. Uh, the second, we, we, we did not develop at the beginning. We can say that way. But there is an explanation, which is historic. We are learning to work in a state. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have the idea of a state as we have today. Right. Yeah. For example, Mozambique, we did not know each other. Right. Until 62, when uh, Eduardo Monjana, I, I hope you, you heard about him, the first president of Relimo, said that, well, you know, if we want to do away with colonialism, we must be united. So it was the first time that Mozambique, 62, started to see each other as brothers and sisters. And from that moment on, Mozambique is united. We have many problems, but all of us are Mozambicans. We use the differences as a way of showing our riches. We are rich, we are, we are, we are wealthy, because our culture is varied, it's, it's, it's diverse. Uh, so today, uh, we can say that these problems that we have, they are still there in a continent as such, but it's not the continent that has all those problems. Uh, so a lot of good things are being happening. In Mozambique, we don't have that problem. Uh, at least there's a serious problem politically mm. in our uh, in national policies. Let's talk about politics because uh, you had a very strange situation in Mozambique where you got independence and then went into so many years of civil war between different parties. Uh, and then the, the, the party you were associated with eventually uh, prevailed as the, as the government and has been in government since 1994. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, that you, you, you won 42 out of 44 precincts, presidential precincts? The, the and that generally gets some attraction around, get, gets some attention around the world when, uh. when you've had a country that's been fighting for all these years and, and then you win such a big election. Uh -huh. uh, what are you doing to address the world's concerns about fairness and transparency in the political system? <laughs> it's quite a complex question. Uh, you know, our, 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 our law, electoral law, uh, considers that uh, all parties interested in an election are there uh, when there is voting taking place. And they, all of them, they count these votes together and they sign right. together these documents. So 
although you have many problems which are, are normal, it's the first time, well, since 1912 that we have this type of, ele of elections. Uh, but the fact is that the end results, as the international community has said, it's the correct one. You may have a difference of one point or two points, but the fact is that what comes out as a, re as a result, even the international community, UN, uh, SADC, uh, African Union, and whoever is an observer, uh, they confirmed. Well, yeah, no, and that's true. I think that's fair to say. They, I think most observers, all observers suggest they would have that, yeah. won the, the election. Uh, but there is definitely some question. Is it, is, can anybody who wants to run in Mozambique run for office without fear of intimidation or being forced out or somehow not having their votes counted? Again, uh, the law is clear, and this law was approved in parliament right. by all parties. So all difficulties that you find, some of them will say, well, why a person to run for a president must have uh, 10,000 uh, people supporting. The other will say, well, why not five? That's a difference right. that we have to understand, we have to address to that if there is a need to do that. Do you find but that But uh, it's a result of a law that was yeah. decided by the political parties. But do parties. the people of Mozambique, have they been able to get past the colonialism get past the, the civil war and be able to feel that they are full participants in a political process? Because that's a difficult thing to do when you I don't, haven't I don't, had it for so long. No, I don't know any country that does that. No, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah, I don't know any country that, that does yeah. that. But to, to what we can witness, people yeah. do participate. Okay. They do, people do participate. And the other thing that I should just try to clarify here, we talk about civil war. <laughs> this, con this concept of civil war is much complicated in Mozambique. Sure. Because what we had as a war, it was something that came from Rhodesia, right. uh, Mozambicans that were sent to destroy railways in Mozambique so that we would not have the railways working. Right. Uh, and then South Africa at apartheid time and at Ian Smith time. Right. Yeah. So it is a war that was not ours as such. That's why- It was uh, a bit of a proxy war going That's on. right. Yeah. That's why when, when, when we wanted to negotiate, we could not find anybody to negotiate because the Mozambicans were not there. Right. Uh, when we had the uh, Incomata Accord, uh, we had to negotiate with South Africa because it was with South Africa apartheid that we could find yes. peace. That's a, that's a good distinction. I'm glad yeah. you brought that out. It's yeah. not just a civil war of yeah. people who didn't agree. No. There was definitely a proxy involved from other yeah. countries that were trying to destabilize yeah. uh, an independent Mozambique. When Louise asked you a little while ago, uh, what keeps you up at night, uh, you were saying you, you're, you're, you get very tired. The work you have to do uh, occupies yeah, you, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you get to you get to go to sleep at night. But you did mention that in all of this remarkable economic growth and a lot of these successes that you've had, again we go back to a GDP of under five hundred dollars and poverty, where half the country is still in poverty. And you said this is a great difficulty. It uh, is, yeah. This just conceptually, this idea of you know, poverty. But it's a challenge. So we always are challenged by the fact that that country has so many resources and people are so willing to do things, to do wonders, and yet we are not able to make them produce what they are producing. Now we can What's see that- What's the big impediment? What is the greatest impediment to that? If you've got resources and you've got people who are willing, what ne what's the other ingredient? Yeah, I'm going to that. Capital, know-how are things of importance, but also infrastructures, infrastructures. For example, I can say that today in Mozambique, the cost of, of, of food is so high because transaction costs uh, due to infrastructures that are weak, information does not go uh, as it should be, uh, still it's, it, 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 it complicates things. Yeah, but the, the main process is this. Once we are able to control in terms of knowledge, have some know-how, once you have capital, then we can relate with the other investors more easily uh, because that would create more jobs. You know, nationals have a sense of patriotism. They will say, well, my neighbor should have some jobs here and there. Yeah. So when they receive uh, 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 their colleagues, investors, then they will explain to them better how to deal with that. 
today we have most of them having to deal with the government. Government cannot do that. What's the measure by which you will really feel independent? What is the thing that will make Mozambique a country? When, Mozamb when Mozambicans uh, go to school with high quality, when Mozambicans have uh, good uh, health services, when Mozambicans get all information they need it's available, not only in terms of press, but also in terms of contact with each other through traveling or through telephone or through other things, uh, then I am sure that uh, Mozambique will be really winning over. Okay, so that's a vision. What are the practicalities that you would like to achieve or you can see achieving in the course of the next five years or so that will really advance, because medium. again, it's a, it's a, yeah. looking at Mozambique is tricky because you look at that economic growth and you think we, certainly in the United States, have come around to the idea that strong economic growth like you've had in excess of 6%, 7%, 8% must mean a country that is well on its way to <laughs> having no problems. Yeah, but we have we come from a very, you know, after okay. all destruction that, that I was talking about and then at the beginning we, right. we, we, we cannot expect to have that, those results. But the fact is that it is something which is important. Mozambicans know how to achieve 6 to 7% at least. If we de did this all along the 10 years, that means that we can go along with that. Sure. The, 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 big, the big challenge is how to go beyond that mm -hmm. to the two digits. And I think we can do that. I'm, I think we are going to do that. Today, the investment that we're having, uh, not only in mineral resources, but in agriculture, and also in education will make it possible for us in three or four years' time uh, to have a growth rate uh, much higher. Do young Mozambicans... Well, one, one, one thing that I would tell you, yep. some people say, what well, you are growing, you have a growth rate of 7%, but uh, uh, people are still suffering. How yep. do you explain that? How do you distribute that? that health? Well, again, it's a problem of trying to understand what country we are in. Well, because you, you don't really have a... And by the way, a lot of countries have this problem, but you don't really have an effective solidly growing middle class yet. Yeah, we that's, don't, we that's don't. What you, that's we don't, we don't have that, uh, yeah. It is growing now, yeah. but uh, we don't. We are, that's why we're do encouraging that. Do people who make it into the middle class, do kids who can get, who have a potential for an education, do they stay now, or where do they go? No, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have, the, fortunately, we don't have the problem of people going outside once they're educated. It's not a problem yet. Right. You have few ones that will go out, but most of them will stay in Mozambique. They like the country. Yeah, most of them will. Do they have enough of an opportunity to get a good education there? You were saying that in the entire colonial era, era 500 years, they built one university. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, you, you cannot say that you have what, to, what you need in terms of education. What we can say is that uh, the conditions are much better. For example, uh, the entire colonial period, we had only one university at Lorenzo Marx, yep. Maputo. Uh, today, we have more than one university level uh, education uh, institutions in all capitals of province. Hmm. And it's not one, it's four or five. Some of them are public and most of them are also private. And you have this type of education also in some districts. That means that uh, People are covering the whole country and the possibilities are open to many more people. If you say that whether that is enough, I'll say no, it's not enough. But at least it's better than it has improved compared to what used to exist in our country. I just came uh, from downtown where I uh, was with some ministers from uh, Tanzania, from Rwanda, from the Gambia, the vice president from the Gambia, uh, the foreign minister from Chad, and you know they were discussing some of the inter-African issues, uh, com complexities at borders, uh, difficulty with trade between African nations, the inability to have tourists come to one point in Africa and easily one get visa, One visa, one, one visa, visa, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, these are problems, but you know, one thing that my, my wife and I were saying as we were driving up here is that these problems have been around for a long time, and everybody agrees that they need to be eliminated, and the ministers and prime ministers will meet, and presidents <laughs> will meet, and, and then, but Africa is in this, sweet spot right now, there is real growth. It's, it's, a, it's a bright spot, in fact, compared to so many parts of the world yeah. uh, uh, as a continent. Yes, yes. 
Will that be accelerated? I mean, I know in a country with problems like yours, tourism and visas don't seem to be the biggest problem, the biggest issue to deal with, but it, it, it's one of the most lucrative pieces of, of the total African yeah, economy. Yeah, you know, you know, in SADAC, we are, we are, we are doing one like that. We, we are, the idea of one visa yeah. is something that the ministers of tourism are working on a project to see whether that will happen, even when we don't have a World Cup <laughs> or whatever other, other event, yeah. world event. And it is starting to work. Uh, one point, I don't know how, I want to stop, I want to stop, uh, Border. Yeah. Yeah. Where you don't, where you don't leave one country. Yeah, yeah. And then enter another country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when just, I did that, when I drove go. from Johannesburg to Maputo yeah. 12 years ago, we had to go to 13 through. hours at the yeah, border. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now that will end. Yeah. So we are going to have a common border together, and this is will be happening with Zimbabwe and definitely with 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 with, with, with Tanzania and, and other parts. And trade between our countries is increasing. I don't have the numbers here with you, mm. but definitely yeah. after. Uh, SADAC was created, it has increased a lot, not enough, because we can do more business between each other. What about tourism? Because Maputo is, is a beautiful, beautiful country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how is tourism going? Ah, fine. It's, it's growing. It's growing fast. Are you getting the capital investment on that side? Because usually tourism can come independently of other capital. Uh, you know, we, we, sta we start with, uh, with, uh, with we have two, 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 two types of tourism. We have the, the rich one. Mm -hmm. We have Americans and and and, and the British and and the Germans and now uh, also the, the Japanese uh, that go to the islands. You yeah. have islands that where they go and you know, enjoy life uh, definitely. But you have the poor part of it, not not so rich, not so wealthy, yeah. uh, where you have most of South Africans going by, by road, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that together has created a lot of possibilities for a further growth yep. uh, in terms of intake of, of tourists, et cetera. And that's what's happening. But you have other elements that uh, make it difficult. is uh, airplanes uh, uh, and uh, infrastructure like hotels in places like Maputo. They are not enough. Uh, although now they are, we are building a lot of them, but they are not, still, still not enough. Uh, so with that, then we are going to see more of tourism coming in. But I can assure you that uh, in the last uh, five or six years, we have been growing a lot in terms of tourists coming to Mozambique. Uh, you, you spoke earlier, we spoke about education as a method for alleviating poverty, but one of the, the things that coexist with poverty is, is difficult public health situations. Where, where, what have you achieved in terms of health care and public health? Yeah. Uh, first, we... we, we are now training more Mozambican doctors mm -hmm. than they used to have. We had in the whole country only on one faculty for more than 30 years. Yeah. And today we have four faculties uh, for, 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 for medicine. And, and uh, one of them is, uh, is from the Catholic University, so it's private. Uh, so we expect to increase that. We, have, uh, we used to have doctors, medical doctors, only in the capital of provinces. And today we have medical doctors in all districts, 128. There is at least one medical doctor there. It's not enough, but we have that. And the number will be increasing. Now we have training in areas of specialization, surgery, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. In Mozambique also, but of course most of them will go to United States, will go to, to Britain, to, 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 to our neighbor, uh, and, South Africa. And they Africa. go there to train. For training, they, they come stay, back. They come and back. they come back. They come back. Most of them come back. We still don't have. I hope that, that problem will not will not arise uh, in the future. But at this moment, we don't have the problem of uh, people who are very well trained that will tend mostly to stay outside. Most of them will be coming. Some of them, of course, will, will, will stay out. Uh, so these are things. And then, as a result of that, uh, people uh, can go to hospitals that are not that far. Uh, we had used to have people having to do 200 kilometers to go to a medical to to, to go to to, to, to to a hospital, and today in many cases it's 400, I mean 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers. So it's reducing. But those who are in that specific place, they don't go that far. So that means that the 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 the, the, the health system is system is, is is improving. Maternity, maternity, 
also the same thing. Whenever you are, you will find a small maternity so that uh, at least ladies will not have many problems. With one thing which we call Casa Spera, Casa Spera which is a house uh, where uh, ladies, when they feel that they're close to delivering, then they are going to stay there for a week or two weeks, right. close to a doctor uh, uh, or at least to a nurse. But with some primary care, like a nurse or that's a wife right. or something. That's right, that's right, that's right. And so that, that, that's, you, you, what, what about the training of nurses? Because that's like we do the train them. teachers. We do train them uh, in different ways. We train nurses to, to deal with, uh, with, with infant and maternity yep. issues. Uh, and nurses as uh, nurses in general, as we usually know. But also, uh, we have a school of, of, of nurses at the university level. So your general, your, your, as you're away from Mozambique now, and I know you just came in this morning, when you look at it after these years that you've been in, the seven years, uh, are, you, are you quite hopeful? Yes, I'm sure. You know, I, I'm, I'm a lucky man. I, I lived during the colonial period. I was young, but I, I did that. I participated in the liberation struggle. And I was there uh, when we became independent. And I was there when there was this war. And I'm there too as we rebuild the country all together. And really, I'm hopeful that Mozambique will continue to improve. Well, we are hopeful as well. I will come back for a visit. Okay. And we'll see how uh, we'll see. You're how welcome. Thank You're you welcome. very much, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency, the President of Mozambique. Okay.